Hello and uh, welcome to another episode. This time we are talking about machine learning topics. And in this machine learning topics, uh, we want to look at LSTM based networks. And LSTM is basically long short term memory, which can be used to study time series, etc. cetera. Uh, and LSTM is based on another uh, uh, branch of neural networks called RNN, um, recurrent neural networks. And they're used to analyze um, statements, time series, etc. cetera. Um, so um, the goal of this episode is to uh, understand one of the tools which is used to generate data for the LSTM network uh, itself. And so we're going to be looking at uh, time series generators. So uh, long short term memory is uh, an artificial recurrent neural network and it's part of deep learning and LSTM networks are suited for classifying, processing, making predictions based on time series data. Um, given a bunch of words, you can predict the next word or the sentiment, etc. Like if you're looking at reviews, um, you might take the first n words of the review and say, is this review good, bad? You know, you could classify it based on a sequence of words. Um, so time has to do something with it. Um, so basically, if you just look at this input data, this first row is the input data, and you have a bunch of time samples here, right? Or it could be words. Let's say this is the first word, the second word in the sentence, the third word, so on. Or it could be a signal, and you've sampled the signal um, at this point, and a little bit later, let's say a second later, and a second later, and so on. So these are the time samples or, or statements in a word, etc. To make predictions, what we do is we take a set of these. Um, and so in this case, let's say we took these five um, uh, time steps, and then we tried to use these five to predict the sixth one. So that's kind of what we will be trying to do here. And the time series generator is very good at doing this. So it can take a sequence and then create to you, create for you these um, these sets, this X input and this Y output automatically for, for uh, large uh, data sets. So um, the time series generator is um, available in the Keras library and you can use this and in this, um, it takes a sequence of data points um, gathered along equal intervals along with time series parameters. And we're gonna be talking about parameters right here, right, to make it more easy to digest. And then produce batches for training and validation. So the first argument is data. And obviously data is something that you had because you had a series of data samples, time time uh, samples of you know data. So Let's say this first row here is your input data, right? This was what you started with. And then the next thing is the target. And the target could be the same thing. You could just use this input series as your target. And what I mean by target is that the sampler will basically take, will take X um, data from this first series and then the Y data from this target series. And let's just take a simple example. Um, in this case, let's say I want to use these four samples to predict the fifth sample. So when I input these two sequences into the the um, time series generator, it'll take, and if I say the length is you know four, so it'll take these four and, and take the fifth one from this target. And so you will end up basically predicting the fifth one in this series. But let's take a different example. Now let's say instead of this target, we produce this as target. What is the difference here? We have just shifted this so that it produces at this point, it produces this and the next sample. So we are feeding two, two samples and the objective is given these four, I want to predict the next two samples, right? This and this. So at any point, when I inject this into the time series generator and I say length is four, it'll take the input, this these four, and it'll take the fifth one from this series, which would be these two elements, right? So so on and so forth, you can apply uh, different time series to the data and targets and you can predict different things, right? But the simplest possible case is right here, you feed the same data to the target and you can predict the next element in the series. Now, what is the length? The length is how many samples, time samples you used in this set that was used to predict, right? 
So there's one set, one set of X predicting one value of Y, or it could even be a set of Y like this. So one set and one set, these will form uh, the one training set. Um, and then there, the length is just how many time steps are there. Sampling rate, so sampling rate can be used to subsample this, um, the X um, vector here. Stride, stride is um, when you take this um, sample, the next sample could be shifted by how many time steps, right? So stride could by default could be one. So you just shift it by one and you take the next four starting one, two, three, four. So that would be your next um, sample, right? So, uh, sorry, your next set. So um, that is your stride. It's how you shift this set by. And if you shift by just one, then you get the stride of one. Start and index are useful when this is, imagine this is a very long sequence. And in this, if you only want to use 80% for your uh, training and 20% for testing and so on, then you can use this to say in the sequence, you only want to use start this start and this end index to use your training and a different one for your test. You could do that. Shuffle, which means that once you get your X and Y, you can put them in time order or you can just randomize them and reverse would be reverse time order. And batch size is um, is where we collect a certain number of these X and Ys and make it a batch. If you say batch size equals one, it means that uh, the machine would basically train on each X, Y and then back propagate at that point. Normally, you know, to speed things up, you would run multiple samples of X and Y in a batch, and then you feed back and back propagate and train the the neural network. So you could use any batch size as you prefer. Now, with this, let's just dive into the um, the uh, example here, and this code would be available here in Bitbucket. And from Keras, we have taken this time series generator. Now, in this case. Let's take input data to be an array, right? And this is our array, and we're going to feed the same array into your target. And the generator is set up with input target. Length is four, like in our example. Sampling rate is one. Batch size is one, just like we've described. So um, this is how we generate data for the LSTM. And as you can see that, um, you can print the data set size. Uh, data set size is the length of the generator. And the length of the generator is because it has already taken this and produced these six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how many sets of X and Y it has generated. And because we put it batch size of one, you got six. If you said batch size is two, you can just see that um, how many it produces. So let's start again here and run that, run that, run that, run that. So you see now it produces. Um, this X, these two uh, become the one set and then this produces another one, right? So two X's and two Y's make one batch. And so what you can see here is that in a batch, we're still trying to predict one variable, uh, but you get a bunch of X's and a bunch of Y's so that you use this X to predict this by this X and you only get three of these, right? So data set size is reduced. So that's how we use the batch. But let's just get back to one. The other thing I wanna show you is that if you use length, length of six, right? So what happens when we do that? And you see that one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six values in the input X and then one value at the output Y, right? And Another thing you could do is that you could play with a target and you can put, you know, an array here and array as each individual element and you can see what happens there. Um, another thing we can try, um, I guess, is sampling rate. Let's just try the sampling rate to be two. Uh, let's just do that. And if you do that, run it again. So you see that instead of six, you only get three elements here, and you only get 0.95, it drops eight, five, puts one, drops this and puts 1.1. So you have sampling here. But this essentially gives you an idea of how the time series generator can be used. And this 
file is available. It's very easy to play with it. It's probably best if you play with all the arguments and understand exactly what they do to your data before applying it to a real data set. It's important to play with all the uh, tools that you have uh, so that you're confident uh, what the generator is producing. But that's it for now. And um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. My goal is to take this into the next one where we'll start analyzing a time series. And once you analyze the time series and predict the, th th the time series um, into the future, you can see that uh, the time series generator is very, very useful in trying to produce that data for you, right? And um, makes your life quite a bit easy. Otherwise, you would have to write all these functions yourself. So um, thanks for watching, guys. And if you like this video, uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And if you uh, subscribe to my video uh, in this series, then I'll be bringing you more videos on machine learning, uh, other topics in future. Um, thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.